Alice Shriddle. In a bucket. And Emma Marsh. In a bucket. And two others whose identities have remained elusive in a biscuit tin. <laughs> all found on a lambette straight, all similarly reduced in stature and content. <laughs> The man who act and found and with good reason I was a man yeah. admired by other men desired by women possessed of discrimination and wit <laughs> Inability in their asset. Gotcha. Nobility. Oh, you, you, you may scoff at me, friend, but I consider myself quite the scientist once. Mr. Darwin's deepest admirer. Um, well. to East London, I'll have you know. Dr. Ethan Colbridge, PhD. But my initiation to this world, oh, you whisk tears to hear it. Father was a drunken thief and a murderer. Mother, a whore. I've been purged of all pleasure. I reached in the night for my beloved Mary Ann. To find she had absconded. I could barely endure the rigors of the day need be. Another broke your body in a gutter, following on from another and another. How much evil there is in the world. And how ugly the fruits of it. The only worthy moment in my day to day was plucking little Kath from the convent. Her eyes lit up when I entered that Spartan place who was like some kind of heroic rescue. She'd throw her arms around me and... Well, I'd hug her back. And we'd hide on our way home. She often is not failing some piece of string or humming some nursery song or other. And I just watch her. All pretty and still innocent of this world. She gave me a perk. A skip to my steps. Father was not too cut from the gibbet when Mara died of the pox, leaving us to be taken in and cared for in an orphanage, where I was beaten almost skinless on a daily basis. Though very well, eh, Bobby? And that's near the best I can say for it. <laughs> but by my own merit, I was aided, of course, by a kindly patron. Even then, I was inclined to the reckless. A serving boy. I liked his thighs. I mean, he could barely speak the Queen's tongue. But I did not desire him for his capacity to explore the thematic nuances of Bronte. I teased him mercilessly. Oops. Until one day, full of the flush of it, I walked past him into the ice house. He watched me go. I leaned back against the delicious cold of the beef and absentmindedly raised my dress. Slowly. <gasps> Until it perched on the lip of my secret. 
His eyes bulged so I thought they might pop from his head and roll into the gutters. <gasps> and dear Charles, my kindly patron, looked up at me. And in his dimming eyes, I 